The time has come for my 500 hour review video about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of my personal experience. Now guys, as a reminder, again, I said this is my personal experience. You guys might have had a better experience, you might have had a worse experience, but these are all my own. I did receive the printer at the end of February. I was in the first batch, so keep that in mind. Now one last disclaimer before we go ahead and get into the review portion and discuss my thoughts on the 3D printer. I can already hear the people now, Milking this Atari Carbon for views. In an effort to stay transparent, of course, that's why I'm making this video. But if I didn't have anything new to add, I wouldn't. Um, and also, I have a few things that I want to get off my chest in regards to the Elder Goose Centauri Carbon. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Well, let's talk about the price real quick. So the Elder Goose Centauri Carbon is $299. But one thing I want to know is that that's $299 for us customers in the United States. I've had multiple people reach out to me to raise concern about the price on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. It is more than $299 pretty much everywhere else. I don't have the exact numbers, but I have seen in some cases where it rivals a P1S in price. So I'll talk about that at the end if I think based on the price it is in your country, should you get the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Let's talk about the positives. And there's quite a few positives actually when it comes to the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. You know, they listen to the consumer and they have a side spool holder. They have been pushing out consistent updates when it comes to the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, whether that's software or they actually updated the LEDs on the inside. You know, they've made adjustments to the bed. They've made adjustments to the shipping and they've added multicolored ports. So there's a lot of good things that they're doing with the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Personally, when I got this thing, I actually thought it felt extremely well built, right? You got this solid like uh, aluminum. I believe it's like hardened aluminum or die cast aluminum. So it doesn't feel cheap. Again, for us in the United States, it's only $2.99. It's kind of hard to beat. When I was doing more research on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, I actually did find in a review, they commented back to the person because they asked if there was an app. They did say there's an app on the way. So that's actually a pretty big positive for this printer because many other companies are offering that and they just don't simply have one. Now, look, if you order this today, you're going to get all of the updates right, but you're not going to get it till August. You're going to get all of the updates. You're going to get a complete printer. Um, you know, you don't really have anything to worry about. I think a lot of the fixes and all the software has been fixed at this point. Um, you know, some people might be having other issues in the forums, but overall, it's a pretty solid printer right now as far as functionality. I will add that you do get some pretty quality prints off this printer. You know, my life-size battle droid, I printed half the parts probably on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. I also printed this Scout Trooper helmet right here. This whole piece, this is also off the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. I'm pretty happy with the results. I have various other videos showing off the print quality of the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, but that's been overdone, right? I don't want to continue on the print quality. We know it's pretty good. So really, there's not much else to say. That's where the positives go. I think overall, it's, it's a solid printer. So some of my negatives, as far as let's talk print quality, with PETG, I'm getting some, or PETG, however you guys want to say it, I'm getting some iffy results. I'm getting some weird failures. Uh, I'll show you real quick one that I had recently. So I wasn't thinking about making this video, so I kind of popped this, this portion off already. Uh, but you can see like this portion printed perfectly good. And this was like this right here, right? This is the pet G. I, this bed might be toast as well. But now you might say, well, that's just a leveling issue. You know, you can fix that. Well, the, the weird thing on this result is if we zoom in here, is that the support portion of these printed perfectly fine. They weren't too close to the bed. They weren't getting this same result. But then over here, this is how it was printing. You know, I had another failure um, earlier that I put out on my YouTube shorts, and it was just like this giant layer shift on each one. Let me grab those actually real quick. So this is one of those prints where it just like shifted the whole layer and then started printing it. Now, the interesting thing about this is it looked like it did maybe warp, so maybe it didn't stick to the bed, but let me show you another one. I actually had the same exact result. I printed two of these on the same bed, and they printed almost like identical. It was the same exact shift. Like, I, I don't know what happened, but I really only get these issues when I'm printing with a material other than PLA. I've seen some other YouTubers also have similar results, or maybe one other person has similar results with PETG. Now look, that can be completely my fault. I don't print with PETG often. Um, so at the end of the day, that's probably fixable, but that's where I'm currently at with this printer. That, that first failure that I showed you was just really weird to me. You know, of course I leveled it, did it again, and then I had the layer shift one. But I do know when I was printing these hinges, it was giving me also similar fits, just printing these hinges in PETG. 
I had to print them multiple times, adjust the settings multiple times, and I'm using the same exact Overture PETG. I know it works because I've printed it perfectly fine on my Bamboo Lab A1. Now let's talk about how loud the fan is. Now, if you're someone who needs a quiet printer, this is a no-go. Like, if anyone tells you that this printer's quiet, they have to be sleeping next to like a massive airplane or something that's extremely loud, like constantly blowing in there. They might want to get their ears checked because this is, this is a loud printer, guys. Like, I can hear this in my kitchen on the other wall when this thing is going. I cannot hear my Bamboo Lab A1. Like, I'm just being real with you guys. This is a loud printer. If anyone tells you otherwise, I, I, we must not have the same printer. They must've made some updates or something because this thing is loud. So as far as reliability, you know, 500 hours in, I've had a bad nozzle and that's about the only issue so far that I've had with this printer. You know, if you guys haven't watched my previous other videos, I had my hot end go bad on the Elgo Centauri Carbon, but I'm not sure it was the hot end. So when I was trying to plug in the hot end because I started getting a PID tuning error, the little port that it went to completely snapped off. After it snapped off, of course, I felt like, what am I doing? Like I was already waiting for a hot end for like so long. Like I just didn't want to wait any longer. So I was trying to keep troubleshooting, keep troubleshooting. Cause it took me 30 days to get a new hot end assembly. Now that could have been because the ports were backed up in LA because of all the stuff going on with tariffs. It could have been a lot of things guys. But at the end of the day, when parts ship from China, and that's my biggest gripe here, Parts shipping from China for a replacement. I've seen multiple customers with this printer need replacement parts, and it's taking them 30 days. Yes, Elegoo is responsible or responsive. They respond to everybody within a day. But when you're taking a month, and that is a month off your warranty, like what, like, come on, like that's acceptable to you guys? And I know this is just isn't an Elegoo issue. This is really an every 3D printer company issue. But again, like, come on. Because I see all the time Elegoo customer service getting praise. Yeah, they are very responsive, but shipping time is also part of that. Now, I, I kind of ranted a little bit also as well there, but going back to the gist of my story, um, you know, when they replaced my hot end, I have that port break off. I had a local person solder it back together for me. And, you know, thankfully, after replacing the hot end and soldering that part back on, it works better. Now, was it a cold solder joint that was the issue where it broke off too easily? Because a lot of people in my comments said that it shouldn't break that easily. Maybe. Was it a hot end issue? Maybe. But we also have not seen the multicolored system. There's a few things we haven't seen. So, okay, let me let me wrap up this video, I guess. Those those were my cons. I'll leave it there um, when it comes to the Elegoo Centauri Carbon 500-hour review. Let me, let me summarize this real quick. So, with the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, I do think it's a good printer. But... It's not outperforming its class. When it comes to 299, you're getting exactly what you pay for. You're getting a 299 printer. I wouldn't pay $400 for this printer. So if you're in another country where it costs just as much as the P1S or just as much as the Bamboo Lab A1, personally, I would rather have the Bamboo Lab A1. And that's, it's just my personal experience. I believe my honeymoon phase of this printer has worn off. It's still a pretty good bargain buy, right? 299, I think you're getting more you probably getting you know a little over 299 worth of printer um but it hasn't done anything new there's there's nothing innovative about the centauri carbon they've just based you know they've copied basic things and put it on a printer did it as cheaply as possible because how else are you going to get to that that price tag or maybe that's that's why it's so cheap in the united states because they're charging other countries i don't know but if you're in a country where the p1s is a comparable price or it's only 100 or 150 dollars more Definitely, I would not. I would not pay four hundred dollars for this printer. Maybe, maybe you would. Again, this is all based on my personal experience. It doesn't have parts readily available. That's a huge thing for me. Is that I can't go online and buy a nozzle for this right now. If my nozzle went bad, I'm out of commission for a couple months. So if you have a print farm, for example, and you had one out of commission, yeah, maybe you bought two for the price of one. But what happens to that second? You, you're completely done. You you don't have a time frame now of getting back and working on these 3D printers again. So, so what I'm saying is if you have one on pre-order, I think you'll be happy with it. You know, it, it's still worth $299. I just don't think it's worth like $350, $400, or it's not shooting above its weight class to me. It's exact. You get exactly what you pay for. If you have extra nozzles, that's my biggest concern, honestly, is just the nozzle. Everything else, I check the internals to see if like the belts are wearing or anything like that. They seem to be okay. Now, I've, I haven't noticed anything wrong with it um but 
I just don't know how to explain it. I just, I follow myself going to this printer less and less and just going back to my A1 if I need something to print properly. And so it, it's hard. I, I really want to recommend this printer for $299. And I, I guess I can if you're going to pay $299, but it's not in stock. I think by the time you're able to get this printer in stock, there might be other printers that release in August that will be more enticing. And so I personally would just buy a Bamboo Lab A1. Like buy once, cry, buy, buy once, cry once. If you have money for the P1S, I'd probably just buy a P1S and maybe Bamboo runs a sale at the end of this month. I don't know. But I, guys, I'm, I feel so bad. Like I... Let me gather my thoughts. So again, I still think the printer is worth $299. I guess, let me try to end this video. I still think it's worth $299. Am I going out of my way to purchase it? No. Um, if you're in another country where it costs more than $299 and the P1S is a comparable price, would I buy it? No. Um, am I scared that this nozzle is going to blow out at any point and I'm going to have a paperweight? Yes. Um, are there potentially better options on the market coming soon? Yes. Um, am I confident in the multicolored system for Elegoo? I'm not really sure. We haven't seen it yet. We don't know what it looks like. Um, and also just to recap with other company, other companies are now getting cheaper. Like the Cobra S1 has come down in price. I think I had bad luck with mine. I think I got like a taco bed. And so I think even that potentially with the multicolored system is still going to be a potentially like you, you again, you're getting what you pay for with this printer. You're not getting anything extra. There's no app. There's no fail detect systems with it you know you're getting exactly what you pay for and i just don't see how it's worth more than 299 or 350 dollars personally when you buy a printer that's like the p1s you're getting all these different fail systems you're getting the bamboo lab ecosystem you know they they've perfected a lot of this stuff ah, yeah okay so i'm just rambling at this point bagging on it but again it's worth 299. It produces good quality prints. That's what a lot of us are just looking for. Um, if you bought multiple and you're happy with it, that's cool. I'm just sharing my personal experience and my worries with the printer. I think overall, it's still a pretty good buy if you bought it at 299. With all the upgrades, maybe it's printing better too. I don't know, but it's, it's like me driving a Dodge and I'm just worried it's gonna blow up after 100,000 miles. And that's usually what happens. I don't know, but yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think. What has been your experience? Again, please share your experiences. If you've had a good one, if you've had a bad one, ooh, this light's getting a little. If you've had a good one, if you had a bad one with the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, let me know down below in the comments. Again, I know some of you have reached out to me with the troubles because you've had similar, um, and we're getting suppressed. Honestly, uh, you get yelled at every time you talk about bad about the Centauri Carbon in any forum, which is crazy. Uh, but yeah, anyway, guys, I appreciate you for watching, and hopefully I don't get too much hate on this video. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Oh yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It really helps the algorithm, and I appreciate you guys.